you have decided that you have decided you have in business anybody yes someone hello hello sandana hello my dear hello. hi lorena so good to see Bonjour. you yes my Bonjour. son is hi. so excited to say hello to everyone you can say it. hello handsome thank hello. you for being here hello <laughs> Hello, I remember him. He was around when we did our CPCK. <laughs> yes, running exactly. in and out. I totally remember him. A sweetheart that he is. <laughs> Thank mm. you for being here, young yes. man. Thank you. Okay, let's take Suman's Hi. question. Yes, Suman. Uh, in my life, there was a lot of trauma and drama. A lot. So I came to Excess <laughs> <laughs> before one year. Last year I came to Excess. I learned a lot of healing modalities before that. From my childhood, I never faced any any money issue uh, personally. Whatever I wanted, I used to get it. I did not desire too much, but I was never in lack. So money mindset is okay for me. But when the word comes, earning. so from my childhood like everybody used to say ki she is a girl usko kya kamana hai usko kya karna hai usko to ghar dekhna hai bacche dekhna hai now i am 47 and till now pichle saal tak to koi zarurat bhi nahi thi to earn something because uh, in indian family the husband is taking care of all the expenses but now i am in a state of taking divorce so now i have responsibility of four children so uh, this is the problem like when word earning comes then i feel stuck thank you thank you for your questions suman so when you feel stuck what if you could ask a question around that now yeah nowadays i have started questioning only that's why maybe i got you on this call today <laughs> so it is a this question is- So if there is a question that you can ask now what would that be that question would be ki if i have created so much mess in my life now what can i create which is beyond this reality like really i want to live a very different life i i have a lot of big big dreams but the i feel like dreams are too far from me and i am here and uh, other things which were have uh, been in the life they they used to come come in between every time so so you know what you said earlier was that i feel stuck right so the word feel is what keeps you finite the word feel the need to feel and the the trust in feeling is what keeps you from changing what you've decided you cannot change that keeps you stuck So when you find yourself stuck in something you want to recognize that you have just bought a lie you want to recognize you bought a lie okay every area of your life that you find yourself stuck in there's a lie that you bought there there's a lie that you bought there that doesn't allow you to be all of you that doesn't allow you to step into the greatness of who you be so what truth would you have to be in order to have all of you everything that brought up would you destroy and uncreate that please yes i trunk good bad pop pop call nine shots boys and beyonds what truth would you have to be in order to have all of you right and wrong good and bad Bar and bark, all nine shots, boys and beyonds. I'd like you to be in that question and ask yourself that question because when you start to ask for the truth, for you to be it, is when you're willing to step out of the lie that you've sold to yourself for all these lifetimes that you believe as your reality. 
And what if you could lead this reality instead of being a follower of this reality? When you're being a follower of this reality is when you hear yourself, but I'm a woman and my husband should, you know, get the money home or my, my husband should bring the bread to the table. You're basically being a follower of this reality because this reality has told you how it should be. Your, this reality has given you your job and given your husband a job based on the gender that you be and he be based on the roles that you have to now be. You have to now play. That's when you start to be a follower of this reality. So what can change if you started to lead this reality? Mm -hmm. And what could you lead it into? That is different and unique. Right and wrong, bad, pot, and pot, all night thoughts, voice and beyonds. Ask yourself, I'm... be in the space and see what that changes. Okay? Yeah. Cool. And one Thank more you. thing I want to ask like, a lot many yes, times, please. deservability yeah. comes. Like how to uh, keep trust in myself to feel that ki I am deservable. Like every time it used to come, ki I'm not deserving this. <laughs> the first thing I would say is step out of feelings. Because in both yeah. your questions, you have a lot of feelings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what feelings am I using mm -hmm. to stop me from choosing? You see, when we, when we are stuck in the feelings and the thoughts, feelings and emotions, we are stuck in our head. Head is different from your brain. Brain is an organ of your body. The head is a creation. Mm -hmm. Creation based on the lies that you bought. Creation based on what you've told is true, what you've told is not true. Which creates an ego, which creates the rightness and the wrongness of your reality. So when you find yourself in thoughts, feelings, and emotions, you actually find yourself in your head, which is in the lies of this reality. Mm -hmm. Start to ask, mm -hmm. what do I know, be, and perceive, and receive, that I'm not willing to know, be, perceive, and receive. That if I would know, be, perceive, and receive, would have me change my reality. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shots, boys and beyonds. Deservability is a lie, honey. It's based on judgment. It's based on, you know, it's based on a measurement of what you deserve, based on a measurement of what you did. So now an equation can be created. So this is what you did, and this equals to this. And now both sides have to be balanced based on deservability that creates a deservability in your life and in other people's reality which justifies your receiving so what lies are you choosing to justify your not receiving everything that is will you destroy and uncreate that please yes. right wrong good bad pot pot online shots boys and beyonds what lies are you using to justify you're not receiving that you are choosing. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shots, boys and beyonds. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for asking, love. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have any? Hey, Lily. Hi, honey. How are you, sweetheart? I'm sorry, I was stuck in traffic. I just got home. No worries. Thank you for being here. You're looking lovely. As Thank always. You, We're wearing the same print. <laughs> I see that. We are both animals tonight. <laughs> on the, the lioness, prowl. The lioness. <laughs> lioness is on the prowl. <laughs> How Thank does it you. get any better? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, love. Yeah. So it's an interesting conversation that we just started with, you know, thank you, Suman, for bringing up that, that bringing up your questions and, you know, asking, because how much, how much 
how many lies have we bought as our reality that doesn't even allow us to ask a question about it? It's almost like this is my reality and now I have to settle with it. I have to adjust to it. I have to make do, you know, with what is instead of asking a question around it without challenging it from a space of a conflict or a fight, but truly just asking a question like, is this even true for me? You know, and that's where you want to be all of you. you want to be, what, what is your truth that if you would embrace it, would have you show up as the greatness of you? A lot of people could wonder, what does this have to do with business? Like, where's the money conversation? You know, business equals to money. <laughs> well, business equals to money in this reality. I love this question. Acknowledging I have a business is my problem. Wow, Sam, you're a brilliant woman. How is acknowledging my business different from defining it? Oh, lovely. Okay, let's look at your first question. Acknowledging I have a business is my problem. Yeah. So when you, when you say I have a business, what's the energy of that? I'm looking for a definition. <laughs> Yeah, and at least to explain it to people for sure. That I have a business is almost like something that's outside of you that you own. It's an ownership. And what you own in turn owns you. Now, when you have that energy of I have a business, you have to go into defining what that business is as a separation from you instead of acknowledging that you be the business. Now, when you see the energy of you being the business, is there a separation from the business? No. Is there any way that you can define the business? No. It's just who you be. And that is the joy of business. That is the business done different. Because when we look at that energy, you start to recognize that if your life is what you would like it to be, you have a great business. If you're la <laughs> oh, I love that laughter. Can you just keep laughing? <laughs> and if, in fact, if you don't, if your business is not what you would like it to be, now you want to ask, what can I do to change that? Because your Thank business, you. your life, your living is your business. It's not something outside of you. It's not, business is not something that we turn on, we switch on and we switch off. It's not when you get into an office that you get into business. You wake up in the morning, you have your blood, you have blood flowing through your veins. You are in business. The business of creating your life. So when we say I have a business, it's almost, it's, it's, it's just so, it's just such a great way of separating you from being constantly business. You know, business Thank is a you. lot like, in, you're welcome, sweetheart. And business is a lot like, in this reality, business is about, you know, an exchange about I give you and what will you give me back? What can I take from you? And what will you take from me? It's about giving and taking. It's about exchanging something that you can set a value to. But years and years ago, when you know business actually got conceptualized, it got conceptualized as you know people from different cities and different countries meeting in a common open space, which was called the market which was, you know, where people would bring their goods, like I would bring my sheep and you would bring your maybe grains and we would, we would kind of exchange and create a barter system and say, okay, I'll take your grains or okay, I want, I would like a goat or whatever, you know, and that's how it became business. People would bring cotton and people would bring silk and they would bring spices and, you know, that's what started to create the idea of business. Business and that business started out as a beautiful way of engagement, of engaging with each other, of getting an energy into your world that 
you didn't have earlier. You know, when you, when you, it was, it was about, okay, I like your cotton. And the person is like, oh, I like your, your goat. Okay, you take my goat and I'll take your cotton. When you take their goat, you also bring a part of the energy into, the, into your world. It's not just the cotton. It's not just the product. It's the energy with the product that comes into your world that contributes to the greatness of your life and living. That's what was business. You know, that's how business got conceptualized and created, which was the commerce of living. So every time you sit with people and you exchange and you engage with people, you engage the energies, you engage the ideas, you engage, you know, each with each other, what you know, and you receive from each other. But then as, as that grew, as more and more people started to, you know, engage in business and wanted their businesses to grow, started to recognize how distance could be a huge detriment. So that's when money got created. You know, money got created to facilitate trade. So trade could now be easy. So when I bring, you know, you, I don't have to carry a goat all the way to some way away country to buy your cloth. I can just go give you the money, get the cloth and come back. Right? So it kind of started to facilitate trade. Money was created to serve you, to make trade easy. But what changed over time was the engagement left from the business, what the business was created for as engagement, the engagement left. There was no more engaging, there was just taking. Because when engagement, when the engaging energy was taken out of business, it became competition. It became give and take. There was no gifting, receiving, there was no contribution, there was no, no, um, no uniqueness to what you could receive because it had to be a comparison to something else or somebody else. So everywhere that became your realities, would you all destroy and uncreate that? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pork, online shots, boys and beyond. So the subtle energy of commerce started to dissipate into the harsh energy of competitive business. But that is this reality. Business is the subtle energy of gifting, receiving, contribution, creating a greater world of possibilities where I receive from you and you receive from me and we create something greater on the planet together, right? And that, that started to grow and money started to, you know, make trade easier. On the other hand, you know, when something like money falls into hands where, where they are, where it's a, it's not, I don't want to say it's the wrong hands because it's not about the wrong hands, but it's the choices that they make with the money. They started to have people look at money as evil, started to make people look at money as wrong. Money wasn't wrong. Money isn't wrong. Money is not evil. Just the way business is not evil. Money is not evil. But what you do with the money has you defining money as evil. And so everything that brought up, could you destroy and uncreate that? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pork, online shots, boys and beyonds. And more than often, business got equal to money. So it was like business equals to money. Great, great equation. Every business school, every business house would teach you that. You have a good money day, you are successful in business. You have a bad money day, you are not successful in business. Which again is such a lie because there are some businesses that are here just to create possibilities in the world. And the money, the, the money that comes to that business could be from a totally different revenue stream, feeding it like a rivulet and allowing it to grow. And if you allow yourself that, if we allow ourselves that, how many revenue streams can you add to your world, to your life, to your creations? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pork, online shots, boys and beyonds. Thank you, Shanna. Thank you, Sam, for your question. I have a question. Yes, yes honey, go for it, darling. While you were talking about how the business world was created, so um, the institution of marriage started as a business between noble families to keep their properties and uh, their wealth. Yeah. I say this because that was the case in my family as well. 
to keep the properties intact and to keep the wealth. So um, is there anything you would like to, can I ask you to talk about that, elaborate? Because then it suddenly turned into love and then he took it as romantic and then we have heartaches and we have so many, like no marriages, only divorces. So even I that- I love is, that, Lily, yeah. When you it's, say business, when, when we yeah. say business is my whole life, my whole life is my business. So where does the institution of marriage fit into that? The rightness and the wrongness. I'm just, I'm sorry if I'm too uh, here and there. No, you're talking. not. It's a, it's a great question. So, so first you want to look at business as your life living. You know, it's not that you're working for business, but your life and living is your business. It is your business. It's your creation. It's your creation, which makes it a business. When we look at marriage, yes, absolutely. When marriage started, the very concept of marriage started out many, 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 many years ago. It was about, you know, you take my land and give me your daughter. And, you know, you take, give me your land and give me your daughter, in fact. <laughs> and let's make, and I'll make my land bigger and I'll be a bigger king in the world or whatever. That's how it started, right? The rulers, they wanted to grow their uh, territory in exchange of, in exchange of something that they called marriage. So it was legal enough. So that became a legal way of growing their business. There was no love in that. It was just a business transaction. And it started out as that because lots of them had lots of wives. Lots of them had um, different women who they loved and their wives just brought in the money. And it was a simple transaction which they, they understood and they, they had no uh, point of view there because that was, that was the idea of a marriage. It was a business proposition. Marriage got romanticized somewhere along the way, just the way money got romanticized, just the way business got romanticized. And you know, when you start to romanticize things that are concepts, now you find yourself at the effect of them. Money is a concept, it's, it's a construct. It's been created by this reality. Marriage was created by this reality. You created it, you invented it. But now if you find yourself romanticizing a construct, who's in control? The construct. Because now the construct is like, ooh, I'll just seduce you a little more into stupidity. And that's what it started to do. But if you look at marriage for what it is, and now when you look at marriage, now the whole, I, I look at marriage very differently now. I look at marriage as a very different, um, I mean, now after being introduced to the tools of access, I look at marriage very differently because marriage is two people coming together to create a different reality that's never existed before. Marriage is about, marriage is about you both coming together to create something that you can't alone. Marriage is about an engaging into possibilities. which is a lot like, again, which is about you creating the business together in oneness. Wow. And everything that brought up, would you destroy and uncreate that, please? Yes. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, online shots, poison beyonds. It's a, you know, very often, Lily, I come across women who say, but I don't work, I'm just a housewife. So I'm not really making any money. My husband makes a lot of money and he gives me the money. And that's where you don't see it as a co-creation. You, you don't even acknowledge that you have a hand in all of that. Like, you know, Sam said, I don't even acknowledge my business. It's pretty much that, that you don't acknowledge the energy that you be that contributes to you both creating a greater reality. How different can this planet be? If we started to acknowledge every energy contributing to us. 
beyond definition, beyond limitation, and beyond the separation. Right and wrong, good and bad, bottom top, online shots, boys and beyonds. Thank you. Thank you, Lily. Radhika had a question in chat. Yes, yeah. Which goes something like, what if you don't have a business yet or just starting off? Yeah, so that's when we look at business from this reality. Okay, that I don't have a business because business in this reality requires me to have um, a certain amount of investment, a certain number of people working with me and actually having a product, right? So you look at the product that's outside of you to be in business, to have a business. But if you see yourself as a valuable product, are you already in business? Yes. Everything that doesn't allow you to know, be, perceive, and to receive that. Would you please destroy and uncreate that? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, online shots, boys and beyonds. If you make, say for instance, if you are in garments and a garment industry, or if you are say in an in a automobile industry, or in a you know, or you're a healer, or you are a facilitator, and you see what you if you don't see who you be as valuable, would your product that you're wanting to bring out into the world be valuable? Your product is a brand based on the energy that you be with your product. That's what makes it a brand. There's so many facilitators, there's so many healers. What makes one different from the other is the brand that you create with your business. By being the energy of who you be with what you're facilitating. So everywhere that you're not willing to acknowledge the brand that you be in the world, you destroy and uncreate that. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pot call, nine shots, boys and beyonds. You're welcome, Radhika. I'm so glad it contributed to you. Yeah. Do we have any more questions? That is amazing. Yes, yes. Oh. Sorry, who was that? That's me, Sunana. <laughs> Hi, Sunana. Go for so, it, darling. You know, I just wanted to ask that uh, the more I've shown up in my business, to be vulnerable enough to be able to be the business, I suddenly am sensing the reduction of business as well. Mm. And this is something which is feeling very... Uh, it's very odd. I'm finding it very odd because it's going, I mean, it's putting everything into a question mark in my head that I am showing up as who I be. So am I scaring people off? <laughs> or oh, what is it? I just don't get it. You know, I, I, so when you said, when you said the reduction it. of business, what do you mean by that? I mean, all of a sudden I am at a position where I have nobody calling me up. So I've had a month where I've actually earned no money. And that's kind of alien for me or now. Today, it's alien for me. So it's strange. It's strange that it's happened in the same month that I've taken uh, the step to show up and to show up more and more and uh, not not go backwards. You know, I, I'm not going to back off on showing up. So I find it like I just find it so strange. So what is? <laughs> it's like so strange. Okay. So the first thing here, you know, where it's a great conclusion that you know I'm showing up and no one's finding me now. No question there. Just a beautiful conclusion. <laughs> All the conclusions that you have around that, would you destroy and uncreate that? Right and wrong, good and bad, hot and pock, online shots, poison beyonds. What can change for you, darling? If you were to ask, what gift is this? I spend every morning asking what's right about this. I haven't asked what gift this is, so I'm going to ask that now. <laughs> and also, love, if you, you want to see this, when, when you said, I decided to show up, there was almost an if I can say so, there was almost an energy of conflict within you of what showing up is and what showing up isn't. 
Is that light for you in your world? No. <laughs> Would you Not like to change really. that? Yes. Yeah. It doesn't create greater, right? Because when you are in conflict about, you know, very often we are like, oh, I've been doing so much access. Now I'm going to show up. Mm. I'm going to show up. It's like, oh. Mm. <laughs> it's almost like a conclusion. I'm going to show up and I know what showing up means. And this is the way it means. And this is what I'm going to show up as. And that's where we suddenly start to separate from who we be into something that we've decided is the right way to show up which is the beautiful image that we put on for people to see. So everywhere that we, we don the image, we be the personality, we play the role that we've decided will have us show up, we destroy and uncreate that. Right, wrong, good, bad, what, 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 nine shots, boys and beyonds. So then I'd love you to ask this question. If I, if I was to show up right now, what would that be? What would that be? Just ask that. I shall. And you see how expansive that is now. Is it? Well, it makes me smile. So stuff makes me smile. It's expansive. <laughs> That's I'll just take that as an indicator. I don't go into smiles if I'm not expanded. <laughs> right. Awesome. Yeah. So ask that love and also recognize. You are going to scare some people. Do you care? Are you willing to be vilified? Are you willing to be made wrong? Are you willing to be judged? I have resistance over there. Yeah. I do. I recognize it. Yes. Everything that doesn't allow you to be judged, to be vilified, to be made wrong, you destroy and create that, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all night shots, boys and beyonds. It's a willingness to be. You don't have to choose to be made wrong. You don't have to choose to be vilified. But it's a willingness that, okay, if you, if you want to judge me, so be it. Judgments are just an energy. And if you have no point of view around the judgment, around that energy, what contribution can that create in your world? How can you use that to your advantage? Which is why we say just direct the energy of judgments to your bank. Allow it to show up as money. <laughs> Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Flank is. Yes. Um, Chana, thank you so yeah. much for <clears throat> that energy of acknowledging that you just shared and also the follow-up question that Radhika had. It's, it's almost like, you know, tending to my baby is my business and, you know, acknowledge. so how much of acknowledging the not form and structure of business from this reality that you don't go ahead and acknowledge the other aspects of what is your life in living? Whether it's you know someone holding her uh, her pet, her a uh, loving dog right now, or you know us having this conversation is so much, yeah. so much of creation happening right here and right now. And how much, how much of what do you call that synergy? You you know you you shared so beautifully of yeah. uh, being able to receive energy of smiling at a child to your business from this reality or the energy of when we have that separation I don't know if I'll be able to even receive from what I call as business and I would I don't think I'll let it into my life and living even is that true no no it's <laughs> <laughs> so funny every time you ask me and, and, and you just it's not true <clears throat> oh we love but telling it, ourselves what is not true so we can control ourselves and stop us because you know and you recognize that you are the only one powerful enough to stop you oh 
<laughs> and even if that makes you uncomfortable acknowledging that, could you acknowledge that? Yeah. I, I really don't know what acknowledging is. Every time, at least when people talk about perceiving, knowing, receiving, I'm like, okay, energetically, I get it. <laughs> but acknowledging, I'm like, I don't get it. So what is acknowledging for me? Ask that question every day. Invite the energy of acknowledgement into your world. For the longest of times when we started to talk about the word, the, the energy of receiving, I won't get it. I'd be like receiving. What is receiving? Giving, taking. For me, receiving meant taking. I was like, what are you talking about receiving, receiving? You know. So I actually started to play with this energy. I started to ask myself every day, what is receiving for me? And I allowed the energy of the word, allowed the energy of receiving into my world. So what is acknowledgement for you? Invite the energy into your world. And you know, whatever we acknowledge grows. And the way you destroy yourself is by not acknowledging the greatness of you. There's a brilliance and a greatness in each one of us that's different, that's unique. Each one of us right now, we look at everybody, each one of us is different. Each one of us has a brilliance. Each one of us has a uniqueness to us. That's our brilliance. And that's the energy that we bring to our business. And that's the brand that shows up. And how would a BDD contribute to that? <laughs> Yes, truly. I love that class personally. It's one of my favorite classes. And I, I have personally received so much from that class. And every time I facilitate the class, there's this, there's this energy of expansiveness in the participants' worlds from a space of truly what else is possible? Truly from a space of, I'm not stuck in business. My business is no more a problem. I'm not a problem in my business. My people are not problems who are working for me. My clients are not a problem. Money is not a problem. There is more possible. Chandana? Yes, darling. How are you? I'm wonderful, Hirul. Thank you, sweetheart. Can you talk a little bit about how business is, uh, you know, why is it that business and life are connected so much? So the physical entity that your business is and how you be, how you live, what relation does it have to your business? So I do get that ultimately your energy is what will reflect in your world be it in your family in your business but specifically uh, can you talk a little bit about that sure darling thank you for that question so business in this reality is about an entity an individual entity right an entity is one that's an that's an energy that can be defined so business in this reality is about defining something that brings you the money and that becomes the source of your life and living. I remember as a child once a friend said, a man's introduction is his business. And you know, I was just, I think seven or eight years old at that time, I was a little kid and I heard this and she was much older than me and I heard this and it kind of stuck in my head and I was like, and you know, every time I would look at that energy and I'd be like, wow, a man's introduction is his business. So in other words, a man is defined by what he does. A man is defined by how much money he makes. A man is defined by being successful 
or a failure. It's all about the definitions and there is no being in that. So business in this reality is about doing. It's about, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to send out emails, I have to have an accountant, I have to pay my taxes, I have to have my clients, I have to have buyers, I have to have, um, I have to know where I have to buy from. I have to, 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 right? Is there any choice in all of that? Becomes like a mechanical, uh, you know, uh, machine yes. going on. And the there is no living in there. Yes. No Just life. That. Just that. Just that. There is no... There is no life. There is no living there. There's just, I have to, I have to. There are a lot of agendas to, to make a business successful, to make it show up. Like, you know, earlier on, um, Sunana talked about showing up. It's about making that business show up by doing. So when you go into the doing, there is no being. And this is how we, I think, uh, create these points of views that are so warped in our space, you know, based on the agendas that, that we choose yeah. to follow. Yes, and absolutely. That reflects again uh, in the business, yes. in your living, yeah. so to In your say. living, in your life, yes. And now when you look at, you know, when you look at from, from your reality of being business, being in business, being present with the business, and now when you look at, okay, I require to pay my taxes, I require to have an accountant, I require a buyer, I require a client, I, you know, you look at all of that, there's no, I have to, I have to, I have to, I have to. There's some, there's a contribution of each thing that you require, whether it's you're paying the taxes, whether you're hiring an accountant, whether you are looking for clients, whether the money is coming or whether the money is going, there's a contribution in that. And now that's where you start to be the business beyond this reality where you don't have to do it. So every time you pay the money, you don't go into a, you know, a freak out mode or you don't look at uh, the tax pay, the, all your, you know, every time you pay your tax, you don't look at it as, oh my God, they took all my money away. <laughs> you know, you don't look at an accountant as, oh my God, now I have to pay him. But you see it all as all of it contributing and creating a business that's truly beyond this reality. I mean, how many of us can receive by paying taxes? Most of us go into freak out mode. But what can you receive by paying your taxes? What can you acknowledge every time you pay your taxes? That you are the creator. So if you can create yes. that, you can create greater. Uh, yes, absolutely. Example. Yeah. And what if that's a way of reminding yourself, wow, I paid so much tax. Wow, that's how much money I made. That's how much yeah. money I created. Now, that's an acknowledgement of who you be. And everything that brought up. And also the fact that you don't want to like, uh, we don't, because then you know, you go into that space of, oh, okay, so if I'm paying greater taxes, then, uh, you know, I'm, it then again turns into that ego, you know, proving thing. But it's yeah. just uh, that, you know, it's, acknowledging that space that oh okay wow how much must I have created to be paying this much tax when you go into a proving thing and when that becomes an ego for you you've gone into a into doing and separating mm -hmm. from your life and living and now the business controls you because if the business is creating you to have an ego and to be big on this planet the business has the power to destroy you. Whoa. And everything that you make significant and important in your life, you make it so you can finally dismiss it and get rejected by it. Mm. So now what has the power to destroy you is your very own business. So no significance and the willingness, and, and to the, play. the willingness to play and to constantly know that you are the source of creation. Your business is not. Mm. You are the source of creation. Wow. Thank you so much.
I love Thank it. You. Thank you. Okay, I think we are good. That sounds like Steve Jobs' reality. <laughs> what if we could all have that? I agree. What will it take? This so, is the question. Uh, Chandana, can you quickly like uh, brush on uh, on what all is covered in the business done different class? Yes, for sure. We have a beautiful. I wish I had it here, but I don't have it here. It's such a thick manual. Trust me, I'm not exaggerating. Exactly. So much more extensive than foundation. <laughs> so much uh -huh. more. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Truly, so much more than a foundation. And not for a second saying the foundation is not extensive and it's beautiful, the foundation. But, you know, the BDD is a very different energy. It gets you to really, truly commit to your life, it gets you to look at your life. And there's no escaping from making anybody a victim because you look at your life, you look at your business and you acknowledge, you acknowledge that you are the creator. You are the source of creation and you have the contribution of every every molecule on the planet. One of my, one of my favorite, favorite conversations in, I mean, I love the whole manual, but one of my, I love talking about, and whenever we reach that section, I, I notice people's reality is going literally like that, is where we have this whole conversation about engaging with the elementals in business and the creation of your life. And, you know, it's like, it's just so expansive because truly, what if you could create your life and living and business every moment by engaging with the elementals, which are the elements of magic? And what can that create? So it's a three-day class. It's a three-day master class. And the reason it's called a master class is I personally look at it as I come out as a master of my life, my living and my business. There's no separation of my life and living in business, but knowing that every moment of my life and living is business. It's business of creating my life. I can't, you cannot separate your private life from any other life because everything about you is you. You can't define yourself as this and that. It's just the whole of you and embracing all of you. Yeah. And with that, let's invite people for the amazing Dubai tour that's coming. We have it starting um, dated uh, on 21st to the 28th. And um, we have the BDD happening on the dates of 25, 26, 27. That's three-day masterclass. Um, I have personally taken it from different facilitators and boy, oh boy, it is a fabulous. You'll feel like you're out of a dishwasher. <laughs> no kidding. Um, and you would, every, every time you go there with point of views of this is what I'm going to get out of the class, it gives you so much more when we are willing to just drop all the definitions we are going in with. So you guys are invited, each of you who hopped onto this call, thank you so much for taking this, you know, easily one hour out of your schedule to be here with us. And we warmly invite you to the Dubai tour and definitely for the business done different class with which Channa is, Bhava. Which is live and online. Absolutely. So no excuses for not being able to fly the Emirates. So, we would love uh, you in person and we have such wonderful, fabulous, yummy hosts. That absolutely. We would like to really, uh, you know, uh, encourage people to not choose online and come to Dubai because uh, the expo is happening and the weather is going to be yummy. It's not going to be hot. And uh, what else is possible? Yummy Chandana with the business done different class. What else is possible? Thank you. Thank you, Hiral. We have wonderful Mary and Lily who've invited us for the class. Wonderful Hiral and Priyanka. And we are just so excited to be with all of you. And truly, what else is possible, ladies and gents? Thank you, Rohini. So Thank feel you, free everyone. to get in touch with either of them or 
you can just hit me up and I will walk you through it happily. All right. So Channa, thank you so much for the call. Thank you so much awesome. for the generosity of spirit. You be with every, every call that you show up. I am so grateful. Super grateful. Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Thank you all for being here, for joining us. What else is possible? How does it get any better than this? Thank you once again. Love you guys. Thank you, Chantana. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye.